To properly function, the retina must have oxygen, nutrients, and a way to dispose of its cellular waste. These needs are usually met by two circulation pathways serving the retina. The first pathway serves the retina from the inside of the eye. In a normal eye, oxygen-rich blood flows into the inside part of the eye via the central retinal artery, shown here with red dots. Oxygen-depleted blood leaves the inside part of the eye through the central retinal vein, shown here with blue dots. The central retinal artery and the central retinal vein access the eye through a narrow channel in the optic nerve. As the central retinal artery enters the back of the eye, it branches into smaller vessels until blood reaches almost all areas of the retina's surface. After the blood has made its way through the capillaries and delivered its nutrients and oxygen to the surface layers of the retina, the blood leaves the eye through a similar system of veins. This is an illustration of the back wall of the eye showing the major retinal vessels. The arteries are shown in red and the veins are shown in blue emanating from the optic disc. When describing the major vessels of the retina, superior is used to describe the upper vessels. Inferior is used to describe the lower vessels. The term nasal would describe the vessels closer to the nose and temporal would describe the vessels closer to the temple. So, for example, this would be the superior temporal artery. The term vascular arcade refers to the vessels which form an arc around the central part of the retina. These major vessels in real life branch into progressively smaller vessels which reach into almost all areas of the retina. An exception is the foveal capillary free zone, also called the avascular zone, this area is slightly larger than the floor of the foveal pit. Surrounding this avascular zone is a dense ring of capillaries located down in the retinal tissue. These retinal capillaries serve the tightly packed nerve cells of this region. They receive their blood supply from the branches of the larger retinal arteries. This ring of capillaries is just a part of the wider network of capillaries nourishing the central retina. Underneath the retina is a second pathway of circulation that supplies blood to the retina. This system's primary component is called the choroid. The choroid is a network of blood vessels situated in the wall of the eye underneath the entire retina. Here the choroid is shown in yellow and the retina is shown in orange. The choroid is supplied oxygenated blood through a number of arteries, shown here in red, which enter the back wall of the eye at a distance from the optic nerve. These arteries are called posterior ciliary arteries. In real life there would be several more of these arteries extending into the back wall of the eye. As these arteries enter the wall of the eye, they branch into the choroid, the vast network of vessels underlying the retina. After the blood has circulated through the capillaries of the choroid, the oxygen-depleted blood flows into small veins that coalesce into larger veins. These larger veins exit the eye and are called vortex veins. So these two circulation pathways supply blood to the retina. The central retinal artery and the central retinal vein supply blood to the retina from the inside of the eye, while the choroid supplies blood to the retina from underneath the retina. Inside the retina, these two pathways work together to nourish the retinal nerve cells. The retinal vessels bring oxygenated blood down to the top two layers of retinal nerve cells, while the choroid takes care of the lowest layer of nerve cells. A unique feature of the blood supply of the retina is what is called the blood retina barrier. The blood retinal barrier is a system of protective features that keeps blood-borne substances from upsetting the controlled, stable environment that is required for the proper functioning of the retinal neurons. These protective features are built around the two pathways of blood supply to the retina, the retinal vessels and the choroid. The protective features associated with the retinal blood vessels are referred to as the inner blood retinal barrier. This is a cross-section and side-view illustration of a retinal capillary. Retinal capillaries are formed by a one-cell thick layer of endothelial cells. In the cross-section, you can see the nucleus of an endothelial cell. These cells loop around to form a tube through which blood passes. 
Covering the endothelial cells is a very thin membrane, and then complicating this description further is the fact that several types of cells either surround or have appendages that contact the surface of the retinal capillaries. These include parasites, which wrap around the capillary, Mueller cells, which surround, protect, and help many of the other cells of the retina, and in the nerve fiber layer, astrocytes, which surround and protect the nerve fibers. In between the endothelial cells and completely surrounding the outer edge of each cell are special proteins which form a connection from one edge of a cell to another. These close connections are called tight junctions. Because of the tight junctions, large molecules like plasma proteins, charged particles like ions, and water are not freely able to enter the retinal tissue by simply slipping in between the edges of the endothelial cells. Instead, for substances to gain access to the retinal tissue, they must pass through the endothelial cell in a process called transcellular transport. So the inner blood retinal barrier consists not only of the tight junctions, but also of the endothelial cells and the surrounding structures that limit access to the retina. The protective features associated with the choroid are referred to as the outer blood retinal barrier. This is a side view of the wall of the eye with the choroid, the retinal pigment epithelium, and the bottom portion of the photoreceptors. Unlike the capillaries of the inner blood retinal barrier, the capillaries of the choroid do not have tight connections. Instead, tight junctions between the retinal pigment epithelial cells prevent substances from slipping in between these cells into the environment of the photoreceptors. This is a top-down illustration of the retinal pigment epithelium. The tight junctions go completely around the perimeter of these cells. In order for a substance to gain access to the retinal environment, it must pass through instead of around the cells of the retinal pigment epithelium. So the outer blood retinal barrier consists of the retinal pigment epithelial cells as well as the tight junctions between these cells.